Good morning. I welcome all of you to this worship service this morning, especially those visiting with us. A very special welcome to you. We're glad that you're here. Uh, several announcements. I do call your attention to all the announcements in the bulletin. I won't take time to highlight those. You can read them. Uh, we do have some extra announcements. Uh, the Red Rose in our church today welcomes Hazel Lane Pope into the world. Hazel Lane was born Thursday to Dusty and, and Sophie Pope. I expected Sophie to be here leading children's church today, but I think she's going to at least take one week off, but that's great news. Also, some prayer concerns. Uh, Mary Plisker's sister-in-law uh, died yesterday in California. Her name is Jane. Don't know the last name, but please remember Mary in your prayers, uh, as well as Wilma Miller, who's having surgery once again on her hand. Uh, Rick Berry is home after his throat surgery this week. He had a feeding tube put in and had some trouble with that one day. He had to stay a little bit longer than he expected. Uh, Julie Sargent is back in the hospital. Um, she's been doing a little bit better, but please remember, continue to remember her in your prayers. And Rossi Mitchell, after her leg amputation, is just doing, just doing wonderful. So that's great news. Also, uh, Will Rogers' mom, Ruth Abramson, Abram, Abramson uh, is in hospice now in Jacksonville, so please remember uh, Will's mom, Will Rogers' mom in your prayers. And then another uh, prayer concern, Daryl Wright, Daryl uh, Williams, great, great nephew, I think, had five years old, ran in front of his great granddaddy as he's mowing the grass, suffered a severe leg injury, and you would imagine great granddaddy's feeling pretty bad about that, but more surgery is occurring today, so please remember uh, them in your prayers, that family. And certainly we want to remember uh, Doug Simpson in the back and death of his father Max Simpson this past week. I lift all these up in your prayers. And I want to thank you for the, participating in the survey that we had uh, going on in May, Church Survey, Holy Cow Survey, still think that's a great name. Uh, we had 190 participants, that's the exact number we had back in 2010 when we took the same type survey. Uh, the survey itself, the results are 39 pages. I'm not giving you that 39 pages. You wouldn't understand it anyway. I'm not so sure I understand it. Uh, but I do understand the summary sheet, and you can pick up one of these on the Narthex table if you're interested in reading about the summary of, of the survey. It may be helpful for you. Uh, may we now prepare our hearts to worship God.
May we join together in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. The voice of our God and King is heard in blessing, as it echoes in its majestic powers over all creation. We come to worship The voice of God is heard in all creation, and it responds with joy to the voice of its creator, sustainer, and renewer. We We come to worship God and to celebrate the way we are welcomed into God's glorious presence. The voices of our holy God are heard in sacred spaces, and God's grace is received as we worship. Amen. May we be at worship together. Opening hymn is hymn number 466. marvelous and living Lord, receive us the way we are, forgive us for what we have been, and, and give us a glimpse of what we can become through the transforming power of, of the risen Christ. And we pray these things this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, our one Lord and Savior, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. <coughs> Let us at this time confess our sins to God silently. May we pray together.
May we pray the prayer of confession, which is printed in your bulletin. Holy and triune God, you alone live in perfect relationship, one God in three persons, mutual and loving, ever seeking reconciliation and unity. You've called us to live in your completion, yet we confess that our relationships are imperfect and we are incomplete without you. We are selfish and greedy, we are anxious and resenting, we feel the shame of our foolish behavior and brokenness. We've allowed sin to drive us apart from one another and from you. Forgive us and restore us. Draw us close and bind us together in your mercy. May we long for wholeness and peace. May we strive toward gratitude and grace in the saving name of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the working power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. How much does God love us enough to send the divine heart, hope, and spirit to us, not to condemn us, but to save us? Amen. And I invite, invite the young people to please come forward for the children's moment. You and the children, sorry. Good morning. Are you glad it's summertime? Are you really? No, you're not. Why are you not glad it's summer? You like school. You like school. Well, God bless you. I never liked school real well. I tried, though. Well, we are on vacation, right? No school this summer. Where are you going on vacation? Anywhere special this summer? Yes, sir? South Carolina. So, uh, that, that's a great place to go on vacation. <laughs> South Carolina. That's where I'm from. God lives in South Carolina. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yes, ma'am? South Dakota. South Dakota. That's wonderful. Where else? My grandma, my grandma's beach house. Grandma and granddad's. Beach House. That's in Florida? No. No. no exactly. It doesn't really matter. You're going to the beach. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Where are you going? I bet you're going to the same place <laughs> with your sister. Probably, you think? It was on somewhere after we oh, you're going somewhere after that, right? Well, a lot of people are traveling this summer. We need to pray for, for traveling mercies that God will keep them safe. Let me ask you another question. You're going on vacation. I hope to go on vacation sometime this summer. Um, what about God? Does God go on vacation? Is God going to South Carolina this summer? Is God going to South Dakota? Is God going to the beach? He is? How do you know that? He actually goes everywhere. He goes everywhere? With us. With us. Isn't that wonderful to know that even when we are not here, when we are traveling, that God goes everywhere with us? Isn't that comforting? And he even goes to school with us, too. And that's even more special. I want you to remember that. Wherever you go this summer, remember that you cannot go anywhere where God is not. God doesn't take a vacation like us. He's always working with us, reminding us that he loves us very much. Don't forget that this summer, okay? School will be starting soon. <laughs> Let's say a prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for summertime fun. We thank you for vacation and we thank you for for your presence every day whether we're on vacation or not in jesus name amen we do have children's church i think they're waiting for you in the back
May we once again unite our hearts in prayer. May we pray together. Gracious God, we thank you today for your work in our lives. You bless us, you guide us, you discipline us, and you bless us by meeting our basic needs. Lord, sometimes we are tempted to trust in our own resources. We scheme and plan without consulting you. In other instances, we forget that it is not by might nor by power, but by your Holy Spirit. Despite our failures, you seek to prod us in the right direction. Sometimes you turn events or failures into great blessings for good. And sometimes what seems to be a blessing brings distress and even unhappiness. You remind us how much we need you to interpret life and, and guide us through the confusing parts of life. Father, we pray today for our church. Every one of us is struggling in some way. Some of us are struggling with patience. We find it too easy to fly off the handle, to answer, answer others harshly. Some of us are struggling with doubt. Others struggling with depression. Finances, marriage, children, parents, friends, siblings, the job, neighbors, or, or, all, or, or our walk with you can be stresses for us. We need one another. We need to encourage and be encouraged. We need to pray for others, and they need to pray for us. But more than these things, we need your power, wisdom, and guidance in our lives. We ask you right now, please allow your spirit to fill us with, with power. Grant us wisdom for the challenges we face and guide us in our decision making. And whatever you want, Lord, that's what we want too. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, demonstrated, your Son demonstrated your great love for us by freely laying down his life. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, your word tells us. You have certainly bought us with a steep price, and, and we want to faithfully serve. We want to serve you in, in response to your love for us. We are your representatives in this world, your ambassadors. And, oh, Lord, help us to share the good news of Jesus Christ with our friends, neighbors, and family members. We pray that soon we would experience the blessing of, of leading someone to faith in Jesus Christ our Lord. And now, Lord, as we focus in upon you, who you are, what you have done in your will and instruction for our lives, open our hearts. May the word of God affect us in small ways so that over time our lives and minds will be conformed to your image. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our one Lord and Savior. Amen.
God has appointed all of us to be stewards. He has to be stewards, to be caretakers of, of his world and his property. At this time, may we exercise that stewardship with the giving of our tithes and our offerings. May we bring our gifts to God. pray. Gracious God, help us to lay daily at your feet all that we have, all that we do, and all that we are. For from you we have come, and to you we must one day return. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our one Lord and Savior. Amen. May we remain standing as we sing now, Open My Eyes That I May See, hymn number 324.
seated. Please turn with me to our scripture reading this morning. It comes from the Gospel of Matthew, a very short but powerful passage. Matthew 12, verse 36 and 37. And I say to you that every careless word that men shall speak, they shall render account for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. This is indeed the word of God. I thought it was a good time to talk about words. I preached uh, the last part of the sermon, an illustration that I used about four and a half years ago. I'm sure you remember that clearly. Um, but it seems as if in our culture today, words are just thrown around carelessly, perhaps with each other as well. So I thought it would be a good time today to talk about a word. Um, so that's what I'm going to do this morning. I want to say a few words about a word. Matthew, again, Matthew 12, verse 37 reads, by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Eugene Peterson translates this passage, I think, in a more powerful way. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. James Reston, columnist with the New York Times, before he retired, wrote a column with the title, The Death of Civility. The death of civility. And what he was really talking about was how we have abandoned the rule of kindness in our society today and in so many of our own lives. And we can restore, he says, that rule and resurrect civility if all of us who are Christians can restore the rule of kindness. And that starts with the words that we use, how we talk to one another. You know, speaking is who we are, right? Speaking is who we are. By speaking, the Bible tells us we will be saved or damned, justified or condemned. A powerful passage. Therefore, I believe all of us should give great care to how we use words, right? We get careless with our words. We throw them around as if they mean nothing. We need to be careful how we use words to and about people because words do what? Words hurt, split, cut, break, inspire, injure, love. We need to be careful. A word is a powerful thing. Any word is a powerful thing. You know, when I meet with couples and talk about marriage... They always want to talk about the service, but then they always say this, almost always say this, we want it to be what? We want it to be good? <laughs> we also want it to be good, and we want it to be very short. Almost all of the couples say that now. We want it to be good, and we want it to be short and simple. We don't want to say any more than we have to. That's what they say now. Preacher, we don't want to say any more then we have to. So he says I will and she says I will and a new institution is formed. Four words, really. Just four words. He will, she will. That's it. And a new institution is formed. Just words. The psalmist says, O Lord, put a watch on my mouth. What a, what a great passage that is. That's good advice. Nothing is ever just a word. Nothing. Words create new worlds. Words commit. There's a very ancient expression. You've heard it before. I give you my word. You've heard that, right? It's an ancient expression, which literally means I give my life to you. Wow. I give my life to you. Now, they don't really mean that, do they? No, it's just, just words. It means nothing. Right? Just words. When you say a word, you are doing something profound. In many cases, you are breaking someone's silence. Think of the silence in which so many people live today. The silence of, silence of being lonely. The silence of 
no one to talk to. And when you speak, you throw a stone against the clear glass of, of that silence. And you interrupt their world with your voice and your presence and the blessing of your life. When you say something as simple as, hello, you break the silence of somebody's world. And it's a blessing that you can give so easily to someone today and tomorrow and the following day. A word. Why don't we bless more with our words today, and especially this society of ours, this culture? Why don't we bless more with simple words? Why don't we minister more with our words? Is it because our culture has said very clearly to us that words are no longer important? Words no longer matter at all. We know that catchy little song we sang is, School children, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Is that the reason? I don't think so. I think the reason we don't bless more with our words is that it's so extremely difficult these days to carry on a meaningful conversation with anyone. A meaningful conversation. I'm not talking about texting or emails. I'm talking about talking. It's so hard to talk to anyone anymore, it seems to me. You know, when someone is deeply moved, they will say what? They will say, well, I can't talk right now. I would like to talk about that, but I'm all talked out. Right? And then we ask, have you talked to your dad about that? Have you talked to your mom about that? The answer is no. Have you talked to your minister about that? No. Have you talked to a friend about that? No. I just can't talk to anyone. And a husband will bring flowers and candy to his wife and say, I love you, but he doesn't really say that. He just brings home candy and, and flowers. And she says, thank you, but I would much prefer that you really say I love you. And then he will say, oh, go smell the flowers and eat your candy. Forget about the I love you part. Why? Because saying something important is the most difficult thing in the world for some of us to do. You know, some things are hard to say. Some things are easy to say. Some things are easy to shout. I've been known to shout in my neighborhood, seems like a lot these days, quit driving so fast. It doesn't do any good, they still drive fast. I can shout, have you gotten the mail today? But I've never been able to shout in a grocery store or a Walmart or wherever, I love you. Never been able to shout that. Have you heard it shouted? I've never heard it shouted, I've never been able to shout the report came back. It's malignant. Never been able to shout that. Hope I don't have to shout that. Why don't we bless more with our words? The simple things that we say. Why can't we talk about things that really, really matter? And here's the illustration that you might remember from some years ago. It comes from Robert Fulgham's wonderful book, All I Really Need to Learn. I learned in kindergarten, a great little book. He writes in one chapter of that book, he says, in the Solomon Islands in the South Pacific, some villagers practice a very unique form of logging. Perhaps that will remind you of the story. He goes on to say, if a tree is too large to be felled with an ax, the natives cut it down by yelling at it. Woodsmen with very special spiritual powers creep up on, up on a tree at dawn and they suddenly scream at it at the top of their lungs. And they continue this for 30 days. The tree dies and it falls over. And the theory is that yelling at the tree kills the spirit of the tree. And according to these villagers, it always, always works. The author continues. He says, ah, those poor, naive innocents, such charming habits of the jungle, screaming at trees indeed. How primitive, primitive that is. Too bad they don't have the advantages of modern technology and the scientific mind. And he goes on to say, me? Well, I yell at the wife. And yell at the kids. And yell at the cell phone the lawnmower. I yell at the TV and the newspaper and the computer. And I've been 
known to even shake my fist and yell at the sky at times. And then he says, man next door yells at his car a lot. And last week I heard him yell at a stepladder for most of the afternoon. <laughs> we modern, urban, educated folks yell at traffic and umpires and bills and banks and machines, especially machines. Machines and relatives receive most of our yelling and screaming. Don't know what good it does. Because machines and things just sit there. Even, even kicking doesn't always help. As far as people, well, the Solomon Islanders may have a point. Yelling at living things does tend to kill the spirit in them. Sticks and stones may break our bones, but words can break our hearts. You know, I can shout some things and I can whisper some things, but there are some things that I can hardly say at all. And those are the things that really count, that really matter. And then I hear the words from Matthew, and I realize that I at least need to try, right? I need to try, because by my words, I will be justified, and by my words, according to Scripture, I will be condemned. Do you believe it is possible for you to go to somebody today and say something to that person that will make a real difference in their life? And then the next question is, will you do it? I end with Proverbs 15:23. Congen congenial conversation, what a blessing. The right word at the right time, beautiful. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. A closing hymn is hymn number 420.
Let's go. 